What's up, everybody? Welcome to Talking Brick. Um, I'm so glad that you all have tuned in today. I know we're back on lockdown in Chicago, so you know um, it's gonna get real boring again. But luckily, there's me and this show called Talking Brick. <laughs> I have with me in the kitchen. Well, I'm in my kitchen. He's somewhere in his house uh, because we can't, you know, record in person. Unfortunately, this is virtual, obviously. So um, I have my homie, Anton Deshaun, filmmaker, award-winning filmmaker, and he's here to talk about um, what he got going on. Anton, introduce yourself. Tell us who you are, what you do. What's up, everybody? Hey, this is, uh, like Brittany said, Anton Deshaun, filmmaker here from Chicago. Um, yeah, so got a couple projects under my belt, mainly one feature film and currently in post-production right now, uh, my short film, The Untold Story of Mild Sauce, uh, that I guess Brittany and I are going to be talking more about today. And Brittany is actually in The Untold Story of Mild Sauce as well. I'm so excited <laughs> about that. I haven't been doing a whole lot of acting and um, that was actually one of my New Year's resolutions for 2020, but Obviously, that got shut down really quickly. So, um, the film that we're here to talk about today is called Mouse Sauce. Thank you, first and foremost, for um, letting me be a part of that. It's truly an honor to work with you. Um, I had a blast on the set. Mouse Sauce. Now, I'm not from Chicago, and I got a lot of people listening in that's probably not from Chicago, but even if you're not from Chicago, you know when you hear Mouse Sauce, it's something to do with Chicago. So did your love for chicken and mouse sauce <laughs> have some type of uh, have some type of play in naming the film? Well, if folks have been to Chicago or know people from Chicago, I'm pretty sure, and I'm I mean more so black folks. Uh, so you probably have heard of mouse sauce before if you're not from here or not from the Midwest. So um, normally mouse sauce, if you ever go to like a neighborhood chicken spot, so if you ever heard of of Harold's or Uncle Remus or Kenny's ribs and stuff like that. Yeah, so these places or, uh, you know, these places have what's called mild sauce, which is like sort of like a mixture of like barbecue sauce and ketchup and some other ingredients. It's kind and of it spicy like, too. Yeah, 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 exactly. You, you, have, it can, you know, you can have it some with hot, um, a little hot, you know, uh, mixed in with there. So, but what it is is just, it's like a flavor, you know, a lot of times people put it on their chicken, their fries, uh, man, I, I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I get catfish from Harold's. I put it on my, I have it on my catfish too. So you put the um, mouse put sauce on, on the, the fish. Yes, oh, yes, and man, it's on I point too. That. Yes, okay. it's on point too. <laughs> so, so yeah, so kind of. So what inspired me? If you get into why I named the film this. Yeah. So the film yeah. takes place back in the '90s. It's about a, you know a fictional R&B group. So when you think about all your like your favorite R&B groups from the '90s they had some like cheesy and like weird names but a lot of their names had meaning behind it yeah. so uh given that my group is from chicago you know the fictional group mild sauce you know that's that was the spawn to name them that but if you think about like groups like uh drew hill drew hill is actually a neighborhood in baltimore where they from okay. um tlc you know yeah, well, see, I'm. I might be yeah. too young. <laughs> All right, well, <laughs> let, well, let me be the professor right now, and school you right now. Uh, <laughs> so, but no, you think about TLC, you know, it's all just initials for their name, T Boss, Left Eye Chili. Um, 112. 112 is called 112 because it was a club in Atlanta that oh, I think yeah. that's where, yeah, so that's where they met Puffy for the first time in um, audition. So, what? you got that. Jodeci. Jodeci is nothing but a derivative off the, all they name, Jojo, uh, Devante, Casey, you know. So it's like all they names combined. So SWV, Sisters with Voices. So I can go on and on and on. 702, uh, that's the area code in Las Vegas from where they from. So basically I just took that formula of like a lot of the 90s groups as far as what they names and gave Miles Sauce, uh, you know, that name for the story. And then also, too, I think it sticks out so – you know, you have somebody like the untold story of Miles Sauce. You know, originally you from here, you can be thinking like, "Well, you talking about is this the documentary about how Miles Sauce got started?" You're like, "Yeah, but not the Miles Sauce you thinking." Right. <laughs> okay. So going off of that, um, you name all of these different groups, singing groups, rappers, or 
I don't know. Do we have some rappers? No, it was basically R and B groups in there that right. changed the name. So this is a story about an actual boy band, right? Well, it's not a real. And first off, okay. let me just correct you. I hate that term boy band. Okay. What when I you, hear what boy, would you prefer? R and B group. R and B group. Okay. R and B group. Because I when I hear boy band is more like in sync or uh, Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and don't get me started on that. Because right, that was I the wave. That was the wave in the late nineties and I felt like the popularity and like the pub they were getting like on MTV T R L. And a lot of that, you know, they was kind of taking like black sounds and it was a lot of black producers, black songwriters working with them. So don't get me started on that. So when I think when you when I hear boy band, I immediately think about NSYNC, Backstreet yeah. Boys. Um, what was it? Uh, Old Town. Like, you know, oh, all, all the way. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. yeah. So, no. But to answer your question, no, Miles Sauce is not about a real group. It's more so a story of me paying homage to 90s R&B music, basically. Okay. Okay. And so um, what made you want to do this? Is it like your love for music or is it something that you always wondered about, like the backstories of your favorite R&B groups? What was the mind in creating this? Okay. I'm going to be honest with you. I, I kind of got this bad. I like to live in like nostalgia where I like to always reminisce of like where I was doing. Like I'm big into, you know, like right now, 2020 in like November, I can all, I can reflect, like my memory is crazy. And my son actually has this bad where I can remember stuff. Like when I was three, four years old, I can tell my mother and tell my sisters and they'd be like, Anton, your memory is crazy. So I'm saying that basically I like to sometimes reflect as far as like more like happy times, like me as a kid, me as a teenager, we and we're, we're with my friends. So a lot of times, you know, Dick Clark said music is the soundtrack of your life. So a lot of times, like when I hear these old 90s songs, whether and it don't necessarily, it's not necessarily limited to, to R&B, but also to like, you know, rap as well. But when I hear those songs, it puts me back into a place of like when I was hearing it, like for the first time, like crazy. OK, you from St. Louis, right? Yeah. So let me let me tell you about the first time I remember seeing and hearing Nelly. So this is okay. like a perfect example how my head thinks. Like when I, I hear certain songs. Listen. <laughs> listen yeah. For the first time you so <laughs> I remember it was like May of 2000, right? Uh -huh. And I'm on the phone with this girl I used to talk to. She was from Gary. And I, Rap City is on in the background. So like if you, you know, you're caking on the phone. City. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> right. So we on the phone and we talking, but we both looking at Rap City at the same time. So the Nelly video pop up and she was like, oh, she was like, oh, I like this song. She's like, I saw this the other day. And I was like, what is it? And it caught my attention. So immediately when I see all this like St. Louis stuff, I'm like, okay, this is somebody from the Midwest. This ain't somebody from down South. So I was like, so me and her was just like on the phone and we just paused and I'm looking at it and listening to it. I'm like, man, this shit is kind of catchy. I'm like, man, I like this. So anytime I think about country grammar, I just go back to that conversation I had with her. And I just remember it was like the end of the school year. I'm about to graduate high school and me seeing and hearing that for the first time. So I'm like that with a lot of songs I hear on the radio, um, just period. So it's, it, I mean, it takes me back to a happy place. So I wanted to kind of bottle that all up and just kind of show homage to that. Okay. Okay. So I want to talk about the music in this film, which I've heard it. And it's, it's crazy. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't have thought that it wasn't something original that's already been done before. So <laughs> I don't know how much you can, how much Brit you could talk about this film or how far you want to take it without, um, you know, giving any spoilers, but how did you go about getting the music for this? Because like, I mean, I don't know if you, I don't know, like you, you might've had a little short every, I feel like every dude, got like a, a time in their life where they wanted to be a rapper. So maybe you, pulled, <laughs> maybe you pulled some of that out, you know. Did you write any of the music or did you have writers for that? No, I did hire writers for that. So just to give you a little background, before I went to uh, film school or got into filmmaking, uh, my desires as a teenager and up until I was in undergrad, I wanted to be, uh, I wanted to own my own record company. So I was in music wow. management 
up until, I mean, I was in music management starting in 15, like one of my homeboys I went to school with and one of my homegirls who I'm real tight with um, t- to this day, they were in a rap group. So mm-hmm. they did it like a little three song like demo and stuff. And we were selling it at school, little tapes. This is like in 97. And we were selling those tapes for like $3 in the school. So what we did was we decided to have a party um, to have like a, you know, a release party for them. And like they was going to perform and stuff like that. But unfortunately, like we had a party. It was like, you know, it was a pack party. But, you know, niggas being niggas, um, got the fight. <laughs> so, you know, you know, while, while I lived at like the, the dudes that, the you know, the cats that, I was, I used to live with, you know, the, the, I, you know, what they call them ops. They was from the other side of town. That's some Chicago stuff. I, yeah. Is, it, is that some Chicago stuff? Cause I don't. Well, I don't honestly, I, I got, you know what? Let me tell you something. I hear that word more now, but I have to give my whole boy, the guy that I was telling you I was managing at the time. He been saying that since like the late nineties. Oh, um, okay. And he actually, and I actually named the character Vaughn after him because he was the first person I worked with on the music side. So okay. I'm kind of getting off uh, off subject here, but let me okay, get back to your question. My bad. <laughs> so, no, I didn't write any of the songs, but I knew in my head the sound I wanted. Um, like I knew the sound I wanted. So I wanted to make sure if we were talking about 90s, I wanted to kind of highlight um, all the sounds of the 90s from New Jack Swing to Freaky uh-huh. R&B and like the, tr- the traditional like love song. So I made sure like the group itself, Mile Sauce, had those items. Um, and then also too, you know, they have a rival group that also has more of a pop side, which is their, the, the group in there is called Fly Nubians, which are the rivals of Mile Sauce. And then the guy that discovers them, uh, which you kind of, this is kind of ties into your role. Uh, yeah. This character called Stony Mac is like a funk old school legend. So what I was trying to do with that, I had a sound for him as well. But, you know, if you listen to, like, a lot of music, mainly rap in the 90s, especially West Coast, a lot of them sample a lot of funk music. So, like, funk music was so big still in the 90s because it was getting sampled a lot in hip-hop. So I knew the sound that I wanted for that character. And, like, the guy who did most of the music, he did four out of five songs. Like, he gave me everything I wanted. Shout out Brian Morris. uh, He's actually from the west side of Chicago. So... Uh, but yeah, so I knew the sound and what it did, I just, you know, me still knowing a lot of artists, I just reached out to songwriters and, you know, some songwriters were available. Um, the, some that were, you know, they sent me demos and, and I just chose based off the demos, like, okay, this is it. And then from there, I had the actors go in and record those songs. That's dope, man. That's like, man, I'm so happy to be a part of this film. I cannot wait to see it. Okay. So... You obviously have a lot of knowledge and did your research in order to make this come to life. So let's talk about your background. Like this is not your first rodeo, putting up a film, right? So um, let's talk about the, your background in film. Have you, uh, is, this, is this something that you always wanted to do? Because this is how we met. Right. We met when you were in your graduate program at Columbia, right? Right. And I was still in undergrad. Right. So is this something that you have always wanted to pursue or, you know, did you just kind of find it later in life? You know what? I always thought that I was eventually going to get to the movie side of it. Um, but I thought the music business side was going to get me there first. Like it was always a goal of mine to, you know, branch off into filmmaking, whether directing or producing. I, I didn't know exactly at the time what exactly I wanted to do, but I know I did want to get transition and um, to do movies. So even when um, I was still dip dabbling and, and trying to, you know, making a music business, whether it was management or whether it was, you know, having production company, whatever the case was, um, I always kind of saw myself, like I started writing probably in like 2006. I, me and my best friend wrote a script and it was like loosely based off, you know, us partying and kicking and shit. Yeah. And what it was, it was, that I realized that I, I guess I just had more so like a come to Jesus moment where I needed to be in control of like my own narrative and be in control and not necessarily depend on artists. And what I mean by that is like working on the music business side where I wasn't actually an artist. I was more so management 
or, you know, things like that. I always had to depend on the artist to move forward. And I, you know what? I got to the point, I was like, you know what? I don't want to do that. And I noticed like, you know, I'm more of like a control freak, uh, but in a good way, because I'm yeah. not like, I'm kind of like, I'm that. not, uh, what'd you say? I said, I'm kind of like that too. That's why I do my own thing most of the time. Yeah. I mean, I'm all about collaboration. Uh, but at the same time, like if I know what I want, I know I, I want it, but at the same time, I'm not like a dictator. I'm always open for collaboration. I mean, even with my actors, with my producers, anybody I have on set. So it, it was it was just that. I just wanted to be in control where I can write, you know, my projects, I can direct, I can be in control and, you know, invest in my own stuff and instead of depending on someone else to invest in, I'm investing in me. Okay. I like that um, because I always feel like, you know, if you can't, nobody could do a better job than you for real because like nobody wanted half the time like you wanted and nobody can really see your vision, you know? Right. Um, you could teach them, but it's kind of hard for them to be just as hungry for it. So going into uh, the filming and the making of Mouse Sauce. So filming is done, right? Yes, it's done. Right. So we in the middle of a pandemic. Like, <laughs> it's, it's like at, at first, like, and especially now we back to the beginning of where we started with this whole COVID-19 thing. How was that filming during a pandemic? Like, were you scared? Like, it? I mean, I know that that called for more people, like experience, um, medical staff to be, on set um how did how was that for you expensive <laughs> uh I yes know. expensive i mean you think about you know it was cost related to this that you never even thought of pre-pandemic um far as like with testing far as having a covet officer on set um yeah i mean it was challenging but at the same time i knew we had a uh, you know a nice little window where stuff was you know at that time open up and I had to take advantage of it, you know, because, I mean, I've been sitting on this script, you know, on this project since 2017. And it was said, like, okay, we got to go in on it. 2017? Yeah, I started the process wow. of writing this in 2017. Dang, that's crazy. So I know it yeah. feels good to, like, get it out there and see people bring it to life. Well, yes and no. Um, I mean, it's not out there yet, but I mean, I have a bigger goal in mind. I mean, this is just like the short. Um, I mean, originally it was written as a feature and, you know, I don't want to give up that dream of still making, it, making this into a feature. Okay. Okay. So when do you think that we can expect to see Mile Sauce, the short? No later than no later. It's definitely gonna be 2021, mm -hmm. but honestly, I think by by spring 2021. Um, because what I like to do, you know, of course, like you mentioned earlier, we're back on shutdown, um, and you know, hopefully, we can ride out this wave, and um, you know, things can kind of go back somewhat to nor yeah, some, somewhat of being idea. normal. <laughs> right, but I really, really, really want to have a screening for at least you know, at least a private screening for the cast and crew and, you know, whoever. Um, I at least want to do that. Um, okay. So that's why I just, we just got to give it time and and um, and aim for it like early spring 2021. Okay. All right. So um, do you, what do you think the, this is just like a kind of a random question on your thoughts of what you see the future being like going forward for films and actors and actresses um, after this pandemic and like, you know, people, the caution being like on 10, you know? Right. You know what? It's going to be real interesting. And I mean, by you being an actress, you know, I, I kind of feel bad because I don't know what, you know, you all can necessarily do because honestly, I don't know if you feel this way, but even though they said a bad vaccination, is close to being here or is almost here or whatever the case may be. I, me personally, I'm not trying to be in that first wave of folks that's taking this vaccination. Me either. Uh, I, it it right. terrifies me. It terrifies yeah. me because so, I 
Yeah, no, go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. No, I'm just saying, like, you know, you never know. Like, it, it's just such a, uh, I feel like this is kind of a knee jerk reaction in making this vaccination. I mean, we almost been in this pandemic for a year, but it usually takes, what did the scientists say? Well, when, when we were- It able- normally takes over a year, well over a year for them to, you know, do it because they got to do the trial periods and stuff like this. This is definitely being rushed. And yeah. I'm not trying to be no lab rats. No, me either. I don't want to be having 10 ears by 2022. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, right, 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 right. Okay. Uh-uh, um, um, yeah. So no, so what I, and what I, why I said that is, mm-hmm. you know, thankfully for my project, I didn't have anything written to where it was actually, you know, kissing or any like sex scenes or anything like that. Yeah. But I'm just thinking more so like the, the even though you know for our project everybody had to get tested, both cast and crew to be on set. But even if you know during this time, you know, you're an actress. And you may get tested, but still, you know, you kind of like, okay, I got to do this kissing scene. I got to do this, this type of scene. It's just like, hey, you know, even though folks are tested, it may be a little uncomfortable. So it it's yeah. more so, but so that's on you on the acting end. But me as a filmmaker, if I'm, you know, got a project that I wrote and I want to make, it's like, okay, it's kind of, you know, handicapping me on what we can necessarily do with some characters because I have to like think twice, like, okay, I don't know if I want to have this love making scene or this kissing scene because these actors may not feel comfortable doing doing this with this COVID going on. Right. So I don't know. You know, it's gonna be interesting. I mean, I know it's still going on. Hey, I'm gonna be honest with you. Shit, strippers are still out here stripping. So and people <laughs> still out here tipping. So some folks just don't care. And that's probably no, why we don't. in the yeah. That's why we here. That's yeah, exactly. that's why we back exactly. on lockdown. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, man. Well, I don't know, but um, I'm gonna do as much as I can from home. Um, I mean, it's been hard, but I think that this really gonna have some creativity pop out for a lot of people. I mean, which it did, like people was coming out with whole albums and Uh you know what I'm saying? Like people still writing and doing their scripts or doing their blogs and whatnot. I mean, you got to film off. So, um, it's, it's still working, you know? Um, so we look forward to seeing Miles Sauce in 2021. Um, do you have any like idea of where you're going to make it streamable? Or I, don't, you- I mean, it's, it's pretty early for that. Okay. Um, I don't know. I'm not saying that that's not going to be an option for me, but I don't know just yet. Uh, But if you, anybody that's out there, you know, we do have an Instagram page. So please follow, follow that. Um, Tell them the Instagram page. Man, I got it. You know, it's so damn long. I got to look it up on my phone right now because I want to make sure I'm telling y'all the right one. Uh, It's the untold story of Miles House. I know you got some punctuation in there. Yeah, exactly. That's why I want to make sure I'm giving them the right one. Hold on, give me ten seconds, if even that. Yeah, it's it's uh. So the Instagram page is Untold Story underscore Mile Sauce. So follow that page. Uh, you know, we release you know uh, some video on there as far as rehearsal. We release some of the, and actually you get to see some of the songs that Brittany mentioned earlier on there. Uh, so we, we're gonna be releasing stuff weekly on that site where you can find out the latest news and update. Uh, regarding that again one more time that's untold story underscore mild sauce and if you forget that you can find me on instagram at anton deshawn as well okay all right y'all hit that follow button all right anton we're gonna move on to the last segment you know i gotta talk some bread with you we're gonna play a little game called finish that sentence all right cool okay cool so we didn't even tell them you also have a podcast and your podcast is about different movies right movies actors you know us showing um, homage to different stuff so I mean we got and we we, you know we kind of I mean it's still episodes out there so feel free but it's called the screen raised us thanks for the plug Brittany but yeah it's called the screen raised us we got different um, episodes such as um, like a tribute to John Witherspoon, a tribute to 
um, John Singleton. Uh, we doing like top five, the, like top five rappers um, in movies debate. Uh, what else? I'm trying to say. I'm about to pull it up now while I have you on the phone. My bad. Uh, but yeah, we have. Yeah, so it's on. Yeah, the uh, screen that raised us is on all the streaming sites from Apple to Spotify, from Google. You can Google it. We even gave like when this quarantine first start, started. The last episode we did was quarantine recommendations. So if you're looking for movies or TV shows to watch during quarantine, documentaries, that was our last episode from a few months ago. We got episodes on best villains from movies, uh, black exploitation films. Uh, we got an episode on missing Ox Oscars. So you ever saw a movie or a performance where you was like, man, this person des deserve an Academy Award. Well, we did an episode yeah. on who we thought should have got an Academy Award for their performance or, you know, movies. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, check us out. Um, yeah, we check got, it out. You know, it's really good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Please go support. Check that out. That's We're going to drop some more episodes in 2021, I guarantee. That's you and Raheem. Shout out to Yes, Raheem. that's my partner from Ohio Phil Raheem Branch. Represent okay. the land, Cleveland, Ohio. <laughs> okay. We're going to get into this game called... Finish this sentence on top oh. of your head. Um, so usually how this works is I start the sentence and you finish it. Fair enough, right? So oh. um, the topics today are anywhere from TV shows to movies. Now with you, we just talked about how you give movie recommendations and you dissect these films and you know all about the shows and everything and the actors. So all you got to do, Anton, is finish my sentence. All right, if I'm you, ready. If you don't finish it correctly, you're going to hear it. Eh. It's just me saying eh. All right. <laughs> okay, you ready? I'm ready. All right. Finish this sentence. I'm sorry, Martin. I just didn't want to go to. I'm sorry I lied to you, Martin. I just didn't want to move to Arizona. <laughs> Ding, 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 ding. Right. Yes. Okay, number two. I, I didn't hit that Arizona right. I should have said, I just didn't want to move to Arizona. Wait a minute, hold on. Let me get, I got I to gotta listen in my head real quick. I'm lying to you, Martin. I just didn't want to move to Arizona. Arizona. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Arizona. All right, number two. I all right, my like bad. I should have wrote some harder ones, but it's cool. If you're really a prince. I'll marry you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the king of movie quotes, so man, yeah. <laughs> I know, dang! I should have gave you some harder, man. Man, the hey, last person. You gonna be in trouble if you got a house party movie quote. <laughs> <laughs> That's no, the movie I, I quote the most. I know, I know that you be talking about house party, so I don't have it on here. <laughs> I wanted to give you something that maybe you might get stuck on, just because I'm catching you off guard. All right. I know you know this one. Dang, I'm mad. Either they don't know. Or they just don't care what's going on in the hood. And almost. Oh, wait, wait. Try it again. Even either they don't know. Or they don't. Either they don't know, they don't care, or what's going on in the hood. Almost. Either they don't Damn. know, it don't show, or they don't care about what's going on in the hood. Oh shit! <laughs> hey, you know what? I, I you know what? What? I feel bad because I feel like we did a clip of that on one of my episodes uh, um, on the podcast when we talk about top five rappers uh, in movies. So yeah, yeah. stone me. <laughs> mm. Well, you got two out of the two and a half out of the three. So you stand undefeated. I guess I could give you a camp crown, you know. Um, we gonna have to put a crown on you when I edit this or something. <laughs> <laughs> so um, thank you, Anton, so much for being a part of this show. Thank you for coming to talk some Brit with me. Um, thank you also for um, having me on Mouse Sauce. It was a hey. pleasure. I had a ball. I can't wait to see this film. Like the, the actors and actresses were phenomenal. They did a great job. You did a great job with casting and, and crew. Like it was just a pleasure being on set. 
So. I love the chemistry you guys, you and Ariel have with uh, with Vincent Jordan, who plays Stony Mac. Yeah. Awesome chemistry. Vincent, oh my gosh, shout out to Vincent. He was hilarious to me. Yeah. On and off camera. Yes. Yeah. That's yes. It. No, y'all did a good job. So actually, we got the album cover ready for you guys. What? That, yeah, wait. I'm gonna. I'm going to be dropping at the end of the month. Okay. Y'all, when he dropped that, I'm going to put it right on my Instagram page. I can't wait yes. to see it. That is very funny to me. Yes. I had a great time. Now, your mama, hey, hey, I'm not going to. My mama's going to be, be like, Brittany, Brittany, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> Dang. I knew yeah. this was coming. I it's, a little, was coming. It's, 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 it's a little edgy, just a little bit. I mean, my mama probably didn't see me. At the club with some edgier, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. She probably doesn't see. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, it's coming at the end of the month. So, um, like, I already know what I'm doing for Fly Nubians next week. I don't know what I'm doing this week, but yeah, Fly Nubians the the next week, uh, and then you all the following week. Okay. All right. Cool. Sounds good. All right, Anton. Well, thank you again for being on the show. Um, just to run that by y'all one more time, tell us where we can find Mouse Sauce, where we can find you, and where we can listen to your podcast. So the podcast is available on all streaming sites from Spotify to Apple uh, Podcasts. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a, on Anchor. So if you go to Anchor, you can find it. Um, also, too, I'm available. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. Um, on Instagram, I really don't tweet that much. So I'm be honest with you. But yeah, Anton Deshawn. That's A N A N T O N Deshawn D E S H A W N. Also, too, one last plug, if you don't mind, Brittany. No, hey, go ahead. That's why we film, My feature film Call Center is also streaming right now online. It's on Quelle TV. Uh, Quelle is spelled K W E L I T V. You can find that. Um, you can do the free trial period, or you can just rent the movie for two ninety nine. That's my feature film that was released uh, three years ago. So feel free to check that out and support. Um, but yeah, I saw it. Miles it's also, it's great. Yes, that's it's how me and you. Re yes, me and you reconnected from um, from, uh, at one of the screenings from uh, Miles Sauce. So yeah, thank yeah. you. And actually, that same screening, you know who else was there that Ooh. I talked to probably right before I talked to you or right after you? Bonzel, Bonzel Scott. That was the first time I met oh, him. For real? Okay. Bonzel was I, at that screening. I, was he at the, there the same night that I was? Same night. Like, literally, like, I, I can't remember if, I, if he came and introduced himself to me first, like, right before I either spoke to you or after me and you talked, but he was at that same screening. Okay. Okay, so, yeah. hey, and that's, that brings me up to a good point for anybody that's an actor. Hey, make sure you make yourself known. Like, this actor, like, I didn't know him from nobody. He came up to introduce himself, gave me his card. I started following him on, um, on social media, noticed that he was in a lot of stuff, noticed that he had talent, and then, boom, I put him in my next film, you know? Yeah. So, hey, you never know. So you got to be make sure you out there networking, folks. I think that's a I think that's a great way to leave off um, for everybody, not just actors and actresses alike, but for everybody during this time. Um, don't get discouraged when you. I know it's kind of hard to find new creative ways to put yourself out there on your social media and promote yourself, but I mean that's how people seeing you. And you want if somebody stumbles up on you, you want them to have something to look at. So you make a great point as a director um so yeah um so we can find you personally anton underscore deshawn oh we got that and okay so the movie untold story yes, underscore, untold story underscore miles also instagram okay all right well thank you so much for being on the show and um talking some brick and yes. we will see y'all later have a good night morning evening afternoon whatever time you listen in See y'all later. Peace. <laughs>